Hi, Heart Room friends. We're going to read the draft of Pelly and Me today, and we're on page 40. Look at these cool words. Of the monkey on the giraffe's head, getting higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. Here we go. Your grace, the giraffe said, giving the duke a small, superior smile. There are no windows in the world I cannot reach with this magical neck of mine. The monkey who was dancing about the most dangerously on top of the giraffe's head cried out, Show him, giraffe go on and show him what you can do with your magical neck. The next moment, the giraffe's neck, which heaven knows was long enough already, began to grow longer and longer and longer and higher and higher and higher, until at last the giraffe's head with the monkey on top of it was the level of the windows of the top floor. The giraffe looked down from her great height and said to the duke, how's that? The duke was speechless. So was I. It was the most magical thing I had ever seen, more magical even than the pelican's patented beak. Up above us, the giraffe was beginning to sing a little song, but she sang so softly it could hardly, I could hardly catch the words. I think it went something like this. My neck can stretch terribly high, much higher than the eagles fly. If I ventured to show just how high it would go, you'd lose sight of my head in the sky. The pelican, with his huge beak full of water, flew up and perched on one of the top floor windowsills near the monkey. And now the great window cleaning business really began. The speed with which the team worked was astonishing. As soon as one window was done, the giraffe moved the monkey over to the next one and the pelican followed. When all the fourth floor windows on that side of the house were finished, the giraffe simply drew in her magical neck until the monkey was level with the third floor windows. And off they went again. Amazing, cried the duke. Astonishing, remarkable, incredible. I haven't seen out of any of my windows for 40 years. Now I shall be able to sit indoors and enjoy the view. Suddenly, I saw all three of the window cleaners stop dead in their tracks. They seemed to freeze against the wall of the house. None of them moved. What's happened to them? The Duke asked me. What's gone wrong? I don't know, I answered. Then the giraffe with the monkey on her head tiptoed very gingerly away from the house and came towards us. The pelican flew with them. The giraffe came up very close to the duke and whispered, Your grace, the man in one of the bedrooms on the third floor, he is opening all the drawers and taking things out and he's got a pistol. The duke jumped about a foot in the air. It's room, he snapped. Show me at once. It's the one on the third floor where the window is wide open, the giraffe whispered. By gad, cried the duke, that's the duchess's bedroom. He's after her jewels. Call the police. Summon the army. Bring up the cannon. Charge with the light brigade. But even as he spoke, the pelican was flying up into the air. As he flew, he turned himself upside down and tipped the window cleaning water out of his beak. And then I saw the top half of that marvelous patented beak sliding out of his head, ready for action. What's that crazy bird up to, cried the duke. Wait and see, shouted the monkey. Hold your breath, old man. Hold your nose. Hold your hard horses and watch the pelly go. Like a bullet, the pelican flew in through the open window and five seconds later, out he came again with his great orange beak firmly closed. He landed on the lawn beside the duke. Can you see the pelican? What do you think is in his beak? A tremendous banging noise was coming from inside the pelican's beak. It sounded as though someone was using a sledgehammer against it from the inside. He's got him, cried the monkey. Pelly's got the burglar in his beak. Well done, sir, shouted the duke, hopping about with excitement. Suddenly he pulled the handle of his walking stick upwards, and out of the hollow inside the stick itself, he drew a long, thin, sharp, shining sword. I'll run him through, she shouted, flourishing the sword like a fencer. Open up, pelican. Let me get at him. I'll run the bounder through before he knows what's happened to him. I'll spike him like a pat of butter. 
I'll feed his gizzards to my foxhounds. But the pelican did not open his beak. He kept it firmly closed and shook his head at the duke. The giraffe shouted, The burglar is armed with a pistol, your grace. If Pelly lets him out, he'll shoot us all. He can be armed with a machine gun for all I care, bellowed the duke. His massive mustache is bristling like brushwood. I'll handle him. Open it up. Open up. Suddenly, there was an ear-splitting bang, and the pelican leapt twenty feet into the air, and so did the duke. Watch out, the duke shouted, taking ten rapid paces backwards. He's trying to shoot his way out. And pointing his sword at the pelican, he bellowed, Keep that beak close, sir. Don't you dare let him out. He'll murder us all. Shake him up, Pelly, cried the giraffe. Rattle his bones and teach him not to do it again. So the pelican shook his head so fast and so far from side to side that the beak became a blur. And the man inside must have felt like scrambled eggs. Well done, Pelly, cried the giraffe. You are doing a great job. Keep on shaking him so he doesn't fire his pistol. There's the Pelly. So we'll stop there, friends. I hope you're enjoying the story. It's getting exciting. We'll read some more tomorrow.